important reminder. All information and ideas are for informational purposes only and are in no way intended as medical advice or as a substitute for medical counseling. Earthshift Products, Dr. Robert Kassar, all of their partners, affiliates, and subsidiaries will not be held accountable for the use or misuse of the information presented therein. This information is not intended as medical advice. The authors, publishers, and speakers of this work are not medical doctors and do not recommend the use of mineral deficient foods, drugs, or medicines to achieve beauty and to alleviate health challenges. Because there is always some risk involved, all persons involved with the development and distribution of this information are not responsible for any adverse effects or consequences of any kind resulting from the use or misuse of any suggestions or procedures described on our website or Earthshift Live radio talk show or therein. Before we get started here, this is something that I want to start everybody with. Um, this is a, a, while we're talking here, because we came here to learn some stuff, just you learning this today, what I'm going to show you is the most definite, beneficial thing why you came here is to learn some non-traditional ways to be able to clean your life up. Cheap, too. Easy, economical, and, e and efficient. That's our motto. Okay? Easy, economical, and efficient. The three E's. Before we get started, you're going to keep this in your mouth. You can do it two phases. 15 minutes or 30 minutes. You make up how long you want to do it. I do this three times a week. This is called oil pulling therapy. This is genius. And I've been playing this game for a long time. And I'm always trying to find things that are not cheap, that are effective. Because it costs a little bit, it's okay. If it costs more, then we figure out how to do it more inexpensive, not cheap, because then it doesn't work. So we're going to go ahead and actually do coconut oil therapy, but we're going to add some things to it. We know that we need to alkalize the body. Two minutes, I'll explain this, then we'll get going. We're going to pass around this cup. The cup has coconut oil in it, okay? The best thing to do, guys, before you put the coconut oil in, it's better to put the baking soda. We're going to put a spoon. You can put a half a spoon to a spoon of baking soda in your mouth. Remember, you're part of an experimental research community here. I'm showing you things that are non-traditional. Non-traditional. Baking soda, aluminum-free, is going to go ahead and actually start alkalizing you, just like if you injected some of this into your blood. Putting it in your mouth actually goes right into your blood before it actually hits the cauldron, the stomach. So we're going to do two things. We're going to mix a little sodium bicarbonate, aluminum-free. Make sure it's aluminum-free. And you're going to mix it with a little coconut oil and keep it in your mouth. Swish it back and forth for 15 minutes. I have a book right here later on that... People need to really go ahead and actually read up on this because these are all new things and I'm just sharing with you. This is really smart, coconut oil therapy. We're going to go over a few different things here with some different products here in a second. Coconut oil therapy. You're going to distinguishly remove billions, billions of, of creatures that live on one tooth. Most of the diseases, as you'll find out, are secreted from root canals from the dirty anaerobic metabolism in the mouth. So you're going to put the baking soda in your mouth or the oil, it doesn't matter. You can put them both in. It tastes sort of weird because it's oil. The oil goes in your mouth. Remember, you always swallow oil and your parotid glands work when you actually are trying to break down things. So if you eat too quickly, like most people do, they never get a chance to pre-digest their food and pre-signaturize it so your body can break it down. Get a lot of gas? We'll try this. Okay, gas is because you have no pre-signaturism. Pre okay, I'm sort of hard to talk about this a little bit because, remember, this is a this is a system here that actually makes sense. When you see it and try it. You're only doing what you're doing today and mark what you're doing today because why? Because it's optimum. Okay, so the coconut oil therapy is usually just done with coconut oil. I add about three or four or five things, but we're just going to add one thing to it: sodium bicarbonate. And I'll show you how to use this four different ways. Okay, but first way we're going to do while we're talking: sodium bicarbonate. Half a spoon to a spoon in your mouth. Then you put in one half a spoon to a whole spoon in your mouth of coconut oil. The sodium bicarbonate and the coconut oil are going to mix together and you swish it back and forth. Once you do this here, now what you've got yourself is you've got yourself a genius action happening. The coconut oil is going to take your parotid gland and it's going to start... Robert Williams just did this a while ago and he told me, wow, do you feel the pain in your, in your glands? Of course, because they finally are starting to work. This kickstarts your parotid gland to clean it out. And if you can't go ahead and keep this gland clean, you can't even start digestion. Mostly everybody I've seen has their parotid glands locked solid shut because we don't swallow our food right. Keep it in our mouth too, too short. So the coconut oil is high fat. You're going to put it in. It's, the enzymes in your mouth are going to try to break this fat down. Okay, 15 minutes. And it's going to turn into the soup. 
it's not going to be oil anymore when you spit it out. And most of the time, your spit's going to turn out really brown because a lot of weird stuff's going to come out. So coconut oil in the mouth for 15 minutes, one spoon of each. I do it in the morning, 15 minutes to 30 minutes while I'm shaving. Or I go on through my nose because that's one of the ways we'll talk about later to train your heart, your mind, and your, your lungs to work together. It's called entrainment of your body. So the, this movement, everybody wants to go ahead and try it. No one has to try it if you don't want to. Remember, you're here and you're doing things because you actually want to experiment. Every day is an experiment. Every day is a research. You go to Denny's and you research what you're going to eat. You woke up this morning and you experimented. And you researched and maybe closed, changed your clothes a few times just because you didn't like it. So the whole lifespan is a research. So go ahead and do the coconut oil therapy. We'll talk about it later. But you'll notice that your jaws are going to start aching. And that means your glands are starting to at work. Think of it as you're going to press the gas and give it full gas pedal for, and it'll happen about seven, eight minutes. You'll start to feel your jaw ache. Okay, and this is when your glands are starting to finally work. Swish it back and forth like 100 miles an hour, um, and you'll, uh, uh, no, actually, we have two different, two different things. You have baking soda. The best thing to do is actually do the baking soda first. Just put the baking soda, about a half a teaspoon to a spoon, without putting the coconut oil first. Put the baking soda in first, then you can put the, uh, the coconut oil in second. Otherwise, yeah, it's a little harder to clean up. And if you get coconut oil in your hand, that's edible coconut oil. That's why you're putting it in your mouth. Rub it on your face or put it on your body. Don't throw it out. Coconut oil, remember, is the number one oil that you replace to be able to change this whole GMO nightmare away. So we'll talk about that later here. Let me hand you over to the Ohm Master. <laughs> We're not going to ohm right now because everybody's mouths are full. Oh, that's right. However, uh, maybe this is going to purify our, our ohms a little bit so it flows a little bit better when we actually do ohm. Uh, from the beginning of time, when people would get together, if they wanted to get a harmonic resonance, if they wanted to get a group unity, they would get together and they would create some music together, some tone. And that tone would unite the group. And it would set a foundation where they could come together and they could share uh, more uh, effectively than they could otherwise, more optimally. And uh, while you're purifying your mouths with this solution, <laughs> we're going to have Mark read his uh, message of what his vision was of Earthship Project, and we'll come back. And before I do that, I feel like I have to do an introduction to the introduction. Even though I mentioned previously, I feel... Many people here, I'm singing to the choir, and don't think they know what I'm about to say. They know that they know what I'm about to say. But I sense that everybody that's come here has sensed the hour. We have been waiting for this time and this opportunity since the beginning. And many people here have heard of this thing called 2012. And they've heard maybe lots of loom and gloom things, but... It's not that at all. It's an opportunity to do exactly what to in front of you and to the right and on the screen right here says, are you ready for the shift? A shift of what? Well, Earth shift. It's a shift, paradigm shift. And I think I'm, again, talking to people that already are aware of this, but to those, I'm just going to assume that everybody knows everything and everybody knows nothing. So I'm just going to continue with this and I'm going to read in a moment. But there is an opportunity for us to change the way we live and change what's been talked about since the beginning of time, which is what some of the religions have uh, spoken of, heaven on earth. Well, the bad news is, is no one's going to do it, and the good news is, is no one's going to do it for, but ourselves. So Earthshift Project was conceived from and for sharing and expansion of conscious awareness. A conscious awareness of what? of who and what we are and what we're doing to ourselves because nobody else is doing it but ourselves. So with that being said, and with everyone here, I'm pointing this, this is directed towards all of us. And I haven't had to read aloud in front of a class since fifth grade, so bear with me. We are amongst the forerunners of a new paradigm who set the precedent, the precedence upon which the ground rules for a new world will be based. We have identified ourselves to ourselves as those who are creators of our own reality and have dared to stand alone in the light of our inner truth, while others, still cloaked in the self-righteousness of consensus thinking, throw stones at higher states of awareness as the very fabric of their reality unravels before them. The new world at whose brink we stand in the present moment 
represents a transitionary, a transitory stage that integrates the old, wor the, old, the world of physical, mental, and ethereal form, and the world of instantaneous manifestation. The care one is able to demonstrate in applying one's newfound awareness will determine the degree of ease or disease one is able to experience. And the byproduct of that experience is the knowledge that there is no one to thank or hold accountable for any of it except ourselves. And the present time frame, which represents the crossroads between a world passing away and the birth of a new world, one is best counseled to be gentle with one and all. It will not enhance one's ascension in any way to blame oneself for what one is now realizing is each individual, oh, pardon me, I'm sorry, each individual's own self-created condition, but rather to simply stop and create a new one. Likewise, it does not serve one to point out self-righteous or authoritative observations through the realizations culled from a collective report of findings in this research community. Wisdom comes from having lived the lesson through experimental and experiential research, not merely having intellectualized it theoretically, which in the past has been heralded as knowledge. Even its counterpart, belief, has been mistaken for such a virtue. When thoroughly examined, it is the blind ignorance of mere belief that is the contagion which propagates the falsehoods of consensus thinking. And then within this uh, thinking, we have created a reality of self-deception and crisis. It is our opinion that when we, bli we blindly believe, it means we surely do not know. We encourage you to drop the cloth of mere belief, open your mind, do your own research, and share your findings with us, just as we share ours with you. It's been said, here's a quote, it's been said of ignorance, the unaware are unaware of their being unaware. But in the light of true wisdom, the aware are aware of their own awareness, or awareness itself. Once we know that we're not at the mercy of events beyond our control, but are indeed drawing the blueprint for those events with our thoughts, attitudes, and beliefs, we will begin to take very seriously the responsibility each of us has for our part as a co-creator in this movie called Life. We are awakening individually and collectively to the realization that we are responsible through our actions and choices for setting the stage for parallel efforts on the part of those within our sphere of influence. When we understand that the magnitude of the difference we are able to make lies in direct proportion to the degree in which we are able to practice our integrity with our word 